Exactly one year ago, I posted my first video to YouTube, titled Drawing Pixel Art Max. Since then, I have created many videos and continue to practice my skills in pixel art and art in general. I have learned many techniques in the past year, and today I wanted to revisit the mechs to see if I can make them any better. Welcome to the one year anniversary of Pixel Overload. So today I'm going to be making some mechs. And if I've learned one thing, it will be to not make your sound effects so loud you can't even hear your own voice. I did something I don't usually do on this channel. I started with the pen and paper sketch. I sketched out the layout for the Lonely Pond and did a couple ideas for the TV cave, but nothing in pen, only pencil. Because this episode is special, I wanted to do the best work I could, and that would mean having a confident concept. You can see in the original video, I struggled with character proportion and gave the first two mechs an awkward stance. By using traditional techniques, I had a much more organic workflow to help with shaping. Another interesting point to note about sketching first is how dynamic the poses ended up being. Having angled lines is something I rarely do in pixel art, and I believe if I started to draw the mechs in pixels first, I would have had much more rigid lifeless models. I brought a photo of my sketches into Photoshop and began outlining them digitally. I did this because I wanted some relatively clean line work to base my art off. Hiding the original drawings, I now had my mechs in black and white lines. All that was left to do was resize them so I could use them with my pixel art. This is where the fun begins. I started outlining the mechs in a dark color. Making the line work clean was very important to me as I tried to stray away from the sketchy aesthetic. However, this did bring about the issue of jaggies. Jaggies are jagged edges in line work that break up the flow of a shape. To avoid jaggies when using the line tool, I like to hold shift so all the segments are equal lengths. The problem with this is that there are limited angles between 30 and 45 degrees, so at some points it was difficult to stay true to the original sketches. Starting with the first mech, I drew the plating and panels at the torso and arms. Because there was so much going on with the left elbow, I had to give myself some guides just to make sure I didn't mess up the anatomy of the arm. I drew plenty of detailing and grooving at the waist, trying to demonstrate the functionality of the mech. When working on the legs, I changed my original concept to make the gravity and physics feel more realistic. I was much happier with how the legs turned out. I worked on the green mech next, and while I could have started colouring the first mech before moving on to the second, I felt like it would be easier to maintain consistency if I did them all together. Sometimes when drawing a character you spend so much time putting in all these little details that when you make a friend you find it difficult to know where to start, just looking at all the details of the original. Outlining the mech went okay, but I had two major issues with my design. First, the hip was too narrow, and it didn't look like it could support the large torso. Second, the left arm was bent in a funny way. I fixed these issues and ended up with a pretty solid outline for the green mech. Outlining the sniper mech, I felt the sketch at the beginning really enabled me to focus on the details and not worry too much about the overall design at this stage. I am pretty happy with the perspective of this mech. It feels much more real this way. Finally, we had the industrial mech. And I have to say, I was really happy with the realistic heavy machinery feel this one gives off. It looks like it could lift some heavy stuff. Now I have the outlines done, I had a very strong base for all my colouring and shading to go. I filled in all the areas with solid colours first, getting the shadows in the right place. Then I worked on removing all the black outlines from each shape. Now I know it's ironic, considering I spent all that time on the outlines. But I think removing the outline gives the drawing a much more real and tangible appearance. The outlines make it feel illustrative and flat in my opinion. Then I added heaps of details, like anti-aliasing, a technique I didn't even know about in the original. The mech still looks too clean, and I wanted to show that he had been through some tough times. So, I added heaps of rust and mud. Finally, a holographic scope completed the futuristic feel. I repeated the same process for the green dude, locking in the colours and removing the outlines. Giving up on a shoulder pad logo, I worked on a holographic shield extension. It's kind of amusing to me that I couldn't draw the logo due to pixel limitations when I'm using such a big canvas size. In fact, this is the largest canvas size I've used for pixel art to this day. The idea for the hologram was a retractable section of the shield that could be turned off for more agile movement when running around. Imagine the holographic part of the shield to make full contact with any object and act like a normal shield would. So having the ability to remove it when running around would minimize collisions with the shoulder. Rust and mud gave the feeling this mech had seen some things. I added some scratches to the shield to illustrate that the shield had stopped a couple of blows and the mech was done. I have to say, I am so much happier with this version of the mech. It feels way less awkward and a little more badass. I don't really have much to say for the third mech. I just did the same process as the first two. So I'll just let you sit back and watch me color this guy in.
in the original video, I forgot to give the last mech any rust or dirt, which is funny because it's the mech that will probably be the most dirty as it digs around in the mud all day. Maybe he had just rinsed off for the day and was going home to watch some TV on the couch. Who knows? Regardless, I wanted to give this guy a lot of mud on the drill and claw. A holographic display shows where he should dig and where he shouldn't. I put a diamond in the display to try and show that the tech was detecting some minerals for the mech to pick up. But I think this might have given a false idea about the mech's purpose. I see this mech as a heavy lifting mech, carrying goods and removing obstacles for the team, not so much a resource gatherer. And that's all the mech's done, the updated version of my very first pixel video. I think these mechs could work really well in a game setting. Maybe each mech has its own characteristics, like attack, defense, precision, and strength. Players would have to choose which mech to pick and stick with those abilities for the rest of the game. Having mechs as characters would also be good because you can show the upgrades visually. Because I used a very large canvas size to draw these, I think they would only be fitting as dialogue portraits or on the select screen. For the actual gameplay, you would want a much smaller character made of less pixels. Thanks for watching my one year anniversary video, and more importantly, thanks for watching all my videos in the last year. I really appreciate all the comments, subscribers, and views. If you want to continue watching my pixel art journey, and hopefully learn some tips along the way, make sure to subscribe to the channel.